Hi, welcome back. Glad you could join me again today. Tell you what, let's have them run all the colors across the screen, and then we'll go on up here and do a fantastic little painting. And I've got my standard old 18 by 24 inch canvas up here. It's covered with liquid white. It's all slick and ready to go. So let's go. Today I thought we'd do a little scene maybe that has some great big mountains, and I get a lot of letters saying I'm still having problems doing mountains. So let's let's work on some mountains today, and I'll take you step by step through that procedure, and I, I think it'll make mountain painting a little easier. Let's start out today with a small amount of phthalo blue. Very, very small amount. And I'm gonna reach right over here and pick up some of the midnight black. So we got phthalo blue and midnight black. Black and blue, blue and black. Black and blue, that's the way I look when I talk back to my wife. There we go. All right, let's go right up here using little crisscross strokes. Let's just lay in a quick little sky. Just, just let the brush just sort of dance and play and have fun, like so. Okay, get a little touch more of the color. And all we're doing is making little X's. And leave some holes open here and there in your sky. When we blend that out, that'll come out to, it almost looks like clouds up here and you've done almost nothing. There. Now, the more overcast you want your sky to be, the more black you add to it. That'll bring it down and gray it, and it'll make it look very overcast. Ooh, big old mean looking sky. There we are. Okay, while we have that brush dirty, take some of the same color, just blue and black. Just tap a little into the bristles. Blue and black. And let's just go right down here. We'll have a little water maybe coming right there. Right there. Pull from the outside in. That way you have these nice feathered edges here that are very, very easy to blend. If you, if you start here and go over, it's very difficult to blend out those edges. And this is a, a lazy person's way of painting. We want it to be as easy as possible for you. Now then. Let me wash my brush, give it a good scrub, shake off the excess. <laughs> now, I'm gonna warn you, if you do that in your living room the same way I do here, you're gonna redecorate the whole room in one heartbeat. Suggest you get your brush beater rack. It's a little rack that goes down in the bottom of a waste paper basket. You shake the brush inside of the basket and beat it on the rack, and it, it saves your happy home. That's no joke. Now then, with just a clean, dry brush, I'm going to begin blending the sky. Now you can blend it until it's very smooth and very subdued. I want it to, to keep some of these light spots in it. I don't want to kill all of them. But in your painting, you blend it to whatever degree of lightness or darkness that you want. Painting is very individual. There's as many different ways to paint as there are painters. Big thing is, is that you do what makes you happy. And if it works, then it's right. There we go. See that little light spot still remains in there, even though we've gently gone across it. All right. Let's have some fun today. We're gonna do some mountains. So let's do some very simple little mountains. We'll take some Prussian blue and midnight black into that. I'm going to add a little bit of white. So we got blue, black, and white. Prussian blue, midnight black, titanium white. Pull it out very flat, get tough with it. Go straight down and cut across. So we have that little roll of paint right on the edge of the knife. Now you have to make your first major decision. Let's go right up in here. Use a lot of pressure. Push. Push very firmly. And then just begin creating some basic shapes for your mountain. There. And when you make your mountains, you make mountains that you like. You make the shapes that you want. The only thing that I would recommend is be careful not to make them just all look like little ice cream cones. Somebody in class one time told me it looked like Wigwam Village. So that can happen without you even realizing it when you first start. So. All you're worried about right now is the basic shape of your mountain. You could really care less what's happening anywhere else. 
take the large brush, pull that downward. There, had a little hair that dropped out. Just take a cornea brush and lift them off. Okay, now then. I want this mountain, I'm gonna put a couple of mountains, I think, in this painting. I want this first one here, we want it to be far away. So I want you to take titanium white. I don't want this one to be very bright. And I'm gonna take a little touch of the mountain color and put into it. I wanna dull that white down. There. Okay, pull it out flat once again. Really get tough, hard as you can do it. Now, this knife has a straight edge on it. So you go straight down, just touch and pull. That's all there is to it. Get that little roll of paint. I want very, very little color back in here. Just the least little indication. And even that, I'm gonna blend it and diffuse it until most of it goes away. See there? This is too far away. Don't want a lot of detail in it. If it has a lot of detail, it'll ruin that illusion of distance. And painting is nothing more than games of illusion. There, it's like the magician. Just like the magician. I'm gonna take a little bit of the mountain color and just very gently, I want a dark edge here. Just put a little dark here and there. I'm not even gonna really put any big shadow colors in there. Just a little dark here and there. See, and that helps create that illusion once again. There. Who was it? I think Houdini once said, there's no trick to taking the rabbit out of the hat. The trick is getting him in there in the first place. So same thing here. We're just working with illusions. There we go. See, that gives you the impression of a lot of things happening and you've done very, very little. Now with a good clean dry brush, and be sure it's dry. Very gently, just tap. All we're doing is just tapping. And follow the angles that you put in there. Lift slightly upward. Very, very lightly. See there, just let it blend right into nothing. That mountain's way back here, it's just sort of floating. There. Okay, it's a very, very nice soft mountain that you've done. Okay, now then let's put another one that's closer to us, bigger, stronger. For that, clean my knife here. I'm gonna take black and Prussian blue. We'll just use black and blue today, what the heck. Pull it out flat, once again, cut off our little roll of paint. Now, I have to make another big decision. Where does your big mountain live? Maybe it lives way up here. And you just make a decision and firmly, firmly push this paint right into the fabric. Look at there, get tough with it. Now see, this color, this base color, is darker than the base color you use back on that mountain back here. So that helps create the illusion that it's in the front. And we don't know where it goes over here. Scrape off all the excess paint. Scrape firmly. I think you can probably hear that. Really get in there and scrape it. Scrape it. You can't get all that color off the canvas if you want to. It's in the fabric now. But you can move it. Because the canvas is wet, you can pull it. And it helps create that illusion of mist down at the base. That easy. Alrighty, there we go, there we go. Just pull it. Mm. See there? Alright, we can wash your brush. That's the fun part of this. Shake it off. <laughs> there we go. Okay, let's put some highlights on this one. For this one, for this one, I'm gonna use just straight titanium white so you can really see it. Pull it out flat, once again, cut off that little roll of paint. It's right down the edge of the knife. Now then, no pressure. Let it float. Zoom, make that little noise. Let it float, just flow right down the side of the mountain. But no pressure. If you apply pressure, it's gonna look just like you're icing a cake and I don't think you're gonna be happy with it. There, 
want that paint to break so it has all these little things in there automatically. And you just make big decisions where you think things are to live. Drop them in. That easy. You have unlimited power on this piece of canvas. Just, it's phenomenal what you can do. Absolutely phenomenal. But the first step is to believe that you can do it. This is just phthalo blue and white. A little roll of paint once again. There, we come right along here. Touch it, let it flow. Maybe we'll take this one and come right directly through. Push that first one right back into the background. Now we can get this big one, bring it directly through. See how it creates the illusion of different planes in that mountain. Over here, there's one. Create a little valley in there. A little place for the mountain goat to go and hide. He's got to have a, a little secret place. He's just like us. Everybody needs a, a little secret place to hide. There. Maybe this one. Look at there. Comes right over like that. We don't know. Here and there, maybe there's a little ridge. But you see, the angles are very important. Mountains are just geometric shapes. They're just, they're angles. Just play with them, have fun. See here, we can bring it right on up like that. Maybe bring these right together. There's no end to this, you can do anything. There. There we go. Just see it in your mind and then put it right here on the canvas. Watch here, watch here. See, this one's way back. Come here, yeah, there you can see it. See it way back? Look at the power you have. Watch here, watch here. Grab it, and we're gonna pull it right into the foreground. Did you know you could move mountains that easy? You can do anything. There. Now we need a shadow right there. That has to have a shadow or you won't play with us. A little shadow in there and wherever you want them. Very gentle touch, though. Okay. By golly, we've got a mess of mountains going here. Now I want to create the illusion of mist down here. So once again, take a good, clean, dry brush, two-inch brush, and begin tapping and lifting very lightly. Very, very lightly. Tap. It's just... This just diffuses. We don't want to destroy. We want to diffuse. There we go. All righty. Just laying in the mist down there. And over here, we'll go in this direction. Boy, we've done some fantastic mountains. And if you've, if you've painted these with me, if you've been painting along, by now, you should be really really having control over the mountains. As I say, I get a lot of letters from people saying they're having some problems. Let's take some black and some blue and get some Van Dyke brown. Little, little lizard and crimson too. What the heck? What the heck? I'm gonna take a little white, be right back there. Pull a little bit of that color out and put a little white with it so it's a little bit lighter. Okay, let me clean my knife. And grab a one inch brush here. You go right into that. Just take the one inch brush and go into it. Let's make some little foothills back here. We've spent so much time working on mountains. Let's just real quickly here throw in something else so we have a, a nice finished painting. But when you're practicing at home, just make layer after layer after layer of mountains. The important thing is not ending with a finished painting. It's learning how to do mountains or whatever it is that you want to learn. And when you're painting at home, look at, look at each painting. Each painting is a learning experience. Look at it. It'll have super good things in it. Maybe it'll have some things in it that are a little weak. Those things that are a little weak, spend some time practicing those. And don't get upset with them. Don't get upset with them. Something I used to tell my students all the time, which I sincerely believe with all my heart, if you ever, in your whole painting career, do a painting that you're totally satisfied with, 
you might as well stop. Your painting career is over. You have nowhere else to go. The fact that you're dissatisfied with your painting when it's done and you can see room for improvement is a blessing. Cherish it. Cherish it. I love people who are plagued with dissatisfaction. It's the most fantastic thing you can own. If you're satisfied with everything you do, then you don't try anymore. I hope you're always plagued with dissatisfaction in your painting. There. Because if you, if you are, you're lucky. I have yet to do a painting that I'm satisfied with. But one day, I'm going to. The next painting may be it. Now, I've, I've used the same color here, only darker. I want to put some little footy hills that are closer to me. Same exact color, only darker. This did not have the titanium white in it. Use the same old dirty brush. Now I'm going to tap the base of it to create that nice little misty effect. Just tap it. Okay. Now then, while I have that color, I'm going to have water here. So I'm going to just tap a little bit right in there. And we'll pull that down and make some reflections. That easy. There we are. See, grab it, decide where your reflection is going to live, pull straight down. It's important that you pull straight down. There. Look at that. Now, very lightly, very lightly, go straight across. And we have some instant reflections. Now, take some liquid white. I'm going to reach up here and get a least little touch of the thalo blue. I mean, just the least little touch. Just want to tint it a little bit. Cut across. Let's go up here. And let's put us in a happy little water line back here. There we go. Just a nice light area to separate these darks. There. And maybe there's a ripple or two going across the water. Whatever. Whatever. These ripples should be straight also, though. Okay. Let me grab a big brush. Shoot. Let's get crazy here. Go right into the dark color. Dark color. It's the same color. All right. Let's go right over in here. And maybe over in here. Yep. Let's have a few trees and stuff over on this side. Maybe they come down right in there, wherever you want them. All we're doing is putting in a dark base color. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Yep, right there. We'll just have one big tree. I don't want to lose all these mountains. Those are pretty nice mountains. I want you to be able to see them. Underneath here, we'll put in some dark. That'll be our reflections. See, just throw it in. We don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. Now then. Take our brush, pull straight down. See? See there? That turns into our reflections. Go across and instant reflections. Instant reflections. All right. Let's go on this side. Over here. Let's just put in all kinds of pretty little things. There. Well, I'm about to cover up that mountain, too. That's all right. As long as you learn how to make a mountain, we know he's back there. We know he's there. Maybe this old tree comes right up into here. I'm going to get a touch of the dark sienna on my brush, too. Just add a little dark sienna right there. I'll let this limb hang right out over the mountain here. I'm going to try to save that peak. And when you do your painting, look at the things that you want to save and work around them. There, see? That sort of just comes all the way around that. I like that. And I like big trees in the foregrounds of the painting. It helps produce that illusion of dip, depth and distance. And it just makes the paintings deeper. There we go. I'll tell you what, same old brush. I'm going to go into a least little touch of yellow. A little yellow, cad yellow, a little yellow ochre. Because I have that color on there, it's going to turn a very dark green. Let's go back up here. I want to begin putting the 
an indication of a few little highlights here and there. We're now painting the limbs that are behind the trunk. In a minute, I'll paint a trunk in this tree, and then we'll put some bright highlights that are on this side. But sort of think like a tree. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but you have limbs that are behind the trunk, some that are in front, some that are hanging to the side. Sort of paint that way. There. See, just just little indications. We're just looking for some form and a little bit of shape right now. We're not really too worried about anything other than that. Maybe we'll do the same thing over here on this one. Just a few little things here and there. Isn't it fantastic? You can take a brush this big and paint all those little things. Don't be afraid of these brushes because they're big. Okay. Tell you what, let's get crazy. I'll take the small knife. I'm going to get a big bunch of Van Dyke Brown. I've got quite a large roll of paint on there. Decide where, you, where your tree trunk's going to live. This is your bravery test for today. Um, Got to make that noise or it don't work. There, put in that big tree. Isn't that fun? Just drop him in. And when you paint for your friends or family, boy, they see you do something like this, they just know you've destroyed it. Beautiful painting. They'll get all excited and carry on. Enjoy it. <laughs> I'm gonna take, gonna take my dark color, black and some blue. I'm gonna put a little sap green in there too. A little brown, a little crimson, whatever, whatever, whatever. As long as it's dark. Clean my knife. Okay, let's go right in there with a fan brush. Shoot. Maybe. Maybe right over here lives a happy little evergreen tree. Just fill up that little hole there. There we go. Give him a little friend. See there? Let's go on the other side. Maybe there's one that lives right here, right in front of the mountain. Boy, he's got some kind of view, doesn't he? I really wasn't planning on doing this, all this in the painting. I just wanted to show you really how to do a fantastic mountain, but this turned into a pretty nice little painting, too. Take a little dark sienna, a little white, pull it out very flat. Grab it. Let's go up here. Now then, just let this touch graze, barely touching. Come right down the tree. We'll put some highlight on it, rascal. On the other side, put a little touch of blue. There we go. Darker, darker, darker as it works around the tree. I'm going to use the liner brush here. A little thinner, go right into the brown. Let's have a little tree limb here and there. There we go. Just here and there, however many you want. I'm going to put some highlights on here, so you're not going to see many of those. Maybe back here in this tree, we need a little trunk. You can just put that on with a liner brush. Now. Let's take a one inch brush. I'll go right into my yellows. Right into the yellow. Tap a lot of paint onto the bristles. I want this to be quite bright. I want this to stand out. This is gonna be our leaves and stuff that's in the front. A lot of lights hitting here. Like so. There. Now if you have trouble making the paint stick, Add a little paint thinner or a little touch of the liquid white just to thin it down. And think about patterns and shapes in here. Don't just hit it random. There, a little individual thing is going on in here. There we are. And there's some in front of the trunk. Hmm. Just all kinds of little doers. There we go. Maybe back in here, there's some little bushes that are nice and dark. There, see them, see them, there they are. This old tree sitting down in a bunch of big bushes. But that easy. I'll tell you what, let's do. Let's take some Van Dyke Brown and go. Maybe a little bit of brown and white. Maybe there's some little land masses in here. And back 
with our one inch brush. And we can put all kinds of little grassy things that grow all around there. But all I'm doing is using the corner of the brush and just tapping down. Very, very easy, very simple. And you can make some of the most striking effects. A little yellow ochre, Indian yellow. There, boy, that's a nice one there. But work in layers. Think about the lay of the land. We're going to leave some of that nice dirt showing in there. Let's go over to the other side. Brighten up that little tree. Look at there. Look at him shine in the sun. Isn't that one of the nicest little ways, though, making all kinds of little leaves and bushes? And let's have some dirt on this side, too. There we go. See? And you just drop in wherever. A little touch of highlight. It's just brown and white again. There. And a few little bushes and stuff. Maybe one big bush here. And with that, the old clock on the wall tells me it's about time to go for today. I hope you've enjoyed this. It's a good study in mountains, and it'll teach you how to do some of the most fantastic mountains that you've ever seen. A little water line under there. I think we have a finished painting from all of us here. Happy painting, and God bless.